Hey, I got something fun to share this time around. That's less of a technique I use on a regular basis and more just a fun challenge I imposed on myself. And that was to use all my analog plugins that I've been collecting dust in my plugin library I've picked up in bundles or whatever to do a design and mix session of a little sci-fi gun weapon thing. Um, so without further ado, let's dive into it. Uh, just, just for clarity, I didn't actually get all the source using those same plugins. I just reached for stuff that was in my library and did like, you know, just the carving and designing of the whole thing using these plugins. So uh, you can probably see here, I have it divided up into a impact bus. And then I got like the lead up tail and like mechy stuff divided down here. That's more so I could do like bunchy bus, bus processing to just the impacts. So starting off with the first layer of the impact, we have this sputtery synth thing um, without the edits and turn to regular rate. It sounds like this. Which is kind of cool. It's got a little bit of low end, a little too much low end, I think. Um, so I use this plugin, which is like a channel strip plugin. You're going to see a lot of this, put this on every channel. And you're going to see me struggle to remember <laughs> what I did on everything because these, man, these analog model plugins are just like so obtuse and not user friendly. Anyways, uh, I did plus 7 dB shelf on the top band at like 8 kilohertz and then a minus 5 dB low shelf around like, 111 and they all do like a little bit of saturation or whatever so that sounded like this clean it up a little bit add some presence and i apply a little bit of saturation man this is like a trip down memory lane seeing all these plugin interfaces again i haven't seen in like a very long time okay uh so second layer uh we have this what is this? Oh, this is from my friend Gabe. Uh, he recorded, looks like, an AR-15, some real gunshots. Um, and at regular playback rate, that goes like this. And looks like I just slowed it down to about 0 0.486. And just trimmed up the tail. And uh, then I applied some pretty heavy processing here, starting with this little substance thing. I don't even know if this is really analog, but it's got like scratches on the interface though so that checks the box for me um it's adding some sub They're pretty beefy there and again going into the console thing this is doing high shelf boost like a high mid boost um low mid cut and then a low boost and then some heavy uh total harmonic distortion there wow that's that's beefy uh, then for third layer, we got a kick drum. I love using these. Whoops, sorry. Without the processing. Sounds like this. And then I just like added punch with transient designer. And decapitator. An E mode, my favorite mode. And some more EQ. Then for the bus processing on the impact, I did more transient design to Punch it up even more. Oh, uh, sorry, without the bus processing, it's like this. Um, then with the transient. And then I clipped it after the transient. You know, I do that a lot uh, with black box. Shout outs to AJ. Uh, nice, very crispy. Um, then for, this is probably like the charge up, I would say. We got this little whoop here. A little bloopy little something. What the heck is this? Uh, maximum crinkle, looks like. That was sped up a little bit, so I guess original rate would be like this. Got those very, like, almost electrical arcing things in the tail. That's just some synth sounds. And then, so I raised the playback rate, trimmed it up, and then did some transient shaping. Really hits in that like mid frequency um, and then from some filter freak to make it like zap and give it that like laser zing and then again god this is like totally inscrutable um high pass filtering some low pass filtering actually at like 10k it's pretty aggressive some compression and limiting 
and high frequency reduction. I think what I was going for here is like, it's pretty harsh. Whoops. Holy fuck. It's like really harsh without the EQ. Like those high zippy zingers really tickle the brain. So this just helps tame it a little bit. I probably would have done that with Soothe if I was using, if I wasn't using the fun little plugin restriction. Uh, then for this layer here in the tail, we got something like this. Looks like textured jellification. That's fun. Uh, at regular playback, that was slowed down a little bit. Sounds like this. Sounds like a little chunky jelly boy. Um, and then I just did. Uh, looks like some high pass filtering or low pass filtering. All right, because it's got a lot of low end going on. That's like. Um, it's not really doing much for me. And then I also did the aggressive low pass filtering at like two kilohertz because this is part of the tail. And as sounds naturally decay, they get darker, not brighter. And that's like part of the tail of the sound, I would say. Uh, then we have this layer here, which is part of the charge up. Um, this one's actually got some really cool processing going on. So the raw sound was like this. I collapsed it to mono, as you can see. And then I applied little Alter Boy. And that really changes the texture quite a bit. It's like pitched up an octave and the form is shifted and it adds, it just like feels completely different. Um, then I did nothing. <laughs> oh, I turned down the stereo width. I forgot about that, which is hilarious because it's mono anyways. This doesn't make a stereo, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, and then after that, I added this, which makes this little like r rising low mid sort of tonal element. It's basically like a resin, self resonating peak bandpass filter that's mixed in at like 50% that give it that little extra bit. Pretty cool. And for this next layer, we got, um, looks like this is also from. Gabe's uh, AR-15 shots. It's just more the tail. Um, sometimes to like sell a weapon as being like more realistic, you gotta mix in some environmental responses. That's what I did here. Um, I think it's the same recording from before. Yeah, I just faded it in because I didn't want the punch. I just wanted the almost like the IR sort of sound. And then I just did some like panning animation to center it. And a little bit of phase mist just to make it sound more sci-fi-y. That little resonant frequency thing going on. Um, some more filtering. I don't think this is doing much else. And stereo with control. At times it's actually doing something. And the mono maker is also collapsing the low frequencies. And filter freak. I was adding some more like moving resonant peaks because those always sound cool for sci-fi character stuff. We got another tail layer here. Whoops, sorry, without the effects. Very different. Um, without, come on. Whoops. Try to copy the whole track there. I'm going to leave this unedited and raw just for your enjoyment. This is like a sustained texture. And I just added in that pitch envelope, so normally it'd be like this. Pretty constant, and I just dropped it. It's almost like a little mini bass drop sort of thing. And then I applied Filter Freak, my favorite. High pass. I only wanted like the little top end bits here. And then the Phase Mistress makes it more liquidy. And then this is doing nothing. It's maybe adding some subtle distortion or whatever. Uh, okay, onto the mech layers. These are all pretty similar. Uh, looks like the original source here was from Michael O'Connor on some camera sounds. And I'm just going to run through all these because they're pretty similar. Just a bunch of different like textures from the same recording, I believe. Uh, if I stretch it out. Yeah, it's just like this sort of stuff. Um, and I just chopped it up to fit the cadence of like pulling a trigger and having like some mechanism go on inside the gun. 
And then I think these all have very similar processing. Oh my God, I used yet another inscrutable channel strip plugin. I think it's just high passing. Here's just something. And then, what was this? <laughs> the same deal. Yeah, it's like boosting the high frequencies, sounds like to me. Maybe not, actually. Is this even doing anything? It's compressing. That's what it's doing. My brain is on full display here. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it's doing. Um, and then for the very final layer, we have some more camera sounds. This is just like mech that goes, um, that you can be, that can be heard after the initial impacts. So this is more like the weapon, I don't know, some like device uh, recoiling or something after the shot is fired, like an auto loader or something maybe. But it's more of the camera sounds and more of this terrible plugin again. Yeah, uh, I think actually, was I using the gate? Yeah, it sounds like it's reducing some of the room tone a little bit. Oh, it's expanding. That's what it's doing. That's what it's doing. Okay. So all that stuff combined sounds like this. Which is kind of cool, but it's like pretty unbalanced. Um, and the impact is like front and center the whole time. So I did a little pre-master processing. Um, I used this emulation of like, uh, was this like a Neve diode bridge compressor or whatever music people will be able to correct me on that, but it's like a bus compressor, I think just to do some peak, sorry, without the decapitator, just to do some peak reduction and then decapitator set to the T, which is like one of the thermionic culture vulture modes, just to clip it again. And a tape plugin and bypass, it's not doing anything. Um, and then that's like what I was working into. And then after I was done with my design, I then did the master bus processing. And this was like to get it to the final polished state that I was happy with. So we run this down from the start. We got transient shaping. Put the limiter turned on. And this sort of makes it more snappy, I think. Um, this enormous EQ. It's modeled after, I think, like a Sontec EQ or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's doing like a high shelf boost of 2 dB, uh, mid reduction of 1, low, low mid of plus 0 0.7. That is critical right there. And then a low reduction of 0 0.6 uh, dB. Uh, low pass filter and a high pass filter at 28. I guess that's kind of having some sort of impact controlling things a little bit. But I'd say more importantly, it's doing like the mono maker thing at 100 hertz to make all the bass stuff centered. And it's probably doing some like analog saturation, whatever. Yeah, let's go with that. We got this. Just when you thought it couldn't get harder to understand what's actually going on in the plugin, you get this. Um, let's enhance, enhance. This is a multiband compressor and I basically just recreated my pro MB preset. That I usually use, I think it's my friend Max's and, uh, it's just doing like multiband gluing, putting things together a little bit. Sounds like that. Forgot to audition it at the start. Um, pretty subtle. Here's with it off. On. It, gives, it gives a little something, I think. This mastering compressor, it's just doing compressing stuff. Um, it's using both the optical and the discrete compressor. Um, it's probably adding a little bit of saturation too. And then we got black box again. Um, clipping it once more. Uh, this Vitalizer plugin that my friend Jesse used on his sessions a lot that I picked up. This is actually doing some pretty serious spectral shaping. Um, it's not exactly clear what it's doing, but I think it's doing some like bass compression and then high frequency enhancement because like without it, it sounds a little dull. And then with it, it's got a little bit more bite. I think I was using this where I would normally use like Gullfoss or something um, to balance, do some like high level mastering uh, 
EQing essentially. And then into the master desk. This is doing quite a bit. It's really driving up the volume. And um, it's doing some, let's see, it's boosting it by like 5 dB, which is a lot. Uh, it's doing parallel compression, some de-essing. That's sort of like what a master soothe would do. Yeah, taking care of some of those high-end squelchers. Um, and it's got a turbo limiter, turbo mode, which is... I'm just trying to do like peak reduction here. I was really racking my plugin library to find like an analog model limiter that would prevent clipping. And this did the job, I guess. Um, and yeah, it's not, I'm not really doing any EQ. Oh, psych. I'm doing like three, whatever, three increment bass boost. Sorry. And some more saturation. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's the whole mix. I'll do a little AB real quick without any of the processing. And then with. Pretty different. You can tell it's just, it just sounds more designed, right? Main takeaways here, I would say, are I really like Pro-Q and it's much easier to use than <laughs> some of these analog console plugins and I should not get any more of them. So I guess lesson learned, but it was fun either way. And uh, thanks for listening.